part two, baby. Okay, so welcome to part two of how to film a wedding ceremony. My name is Jared from Wedding Film School, and we're gonna be talking today about the different team roles of filming a wedding. We're also gonna be talking about the different angles, so your cutaway camera and your tight camera and how those really interact with one another. And then the last thing we're gonna be talking about is how to film a wedding as a solo operator tends to be pretty intimidating. There's a lot of things going on. We're gonna walk you through those basics. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. Let's get started with our camera angles. And before I really dive in, I wanted to remind you that we're not gonna be going over audio in this video. We'll save this for another time. And before we even dive into specific camera angles, I wanted to talk about your team. And this is a camera setup that you can either do solo and shoot the entire day yourself. Some people will shoot with two or three different camera angles as a solo operator, or you can have two, three, four people. In our case, we always show up to a ceremony with at least two people. And those two people can vary as far as their skill and know-how and the value that they're providing to the day. In our case, we have three different team members. The first one is a lead shooter, and a lead shooter is a cinematographer who can do shooting, but also talks to the bride and groom and is really a contact person for the bride and groom and the planner and everyone who's involved. And then the second person is a second shooter who does a little less speaking to the bride and groom and just shows up and is a great cinematographer. And the third person is going to be what we call an assistant. And an assistant, we don't ever really put a camera in their hands unless we're training them a little bit and wanna see what they can do. For the most part, what they're doing is they're doing a lot of setup and they're gonna be doing a lot of monitoring camera angles because if you've done wedding videography long enough, you know you might have a camera angle set up but it might turn off because it overheats or your SD card fills up or any level of mistakes uh, that, that we do on our end. Also, you might know that guests are much less likely to stand in front of a camera that's on a tripod if someone's actually monitoring the tripod. So just having somebody, even if they don't know how to really even operate the camera, uh, except turning a button on and off, uh, someone present, a wife, a boyfriend, whatever, uh, it can go a long way in making sure that your wide shot, your unmanned camera, doesn't get screwed up in some way, shape, or form. So in this case, what we're doing today is we actually have this cutaway camera here. And then we also have a 70 to 200, we're shooting all Canon today, uh, 70 to 200 lens, so this can be our tight shot, this is our wide cutaway shot. Uh, let's talk about the cutaway shot, and we're gonna use a cutaway shot in all different setups, the two, three, and four different camera angle setups. It's important to have a cutaway shot so that if somebody is moving in all your other camera angles, for whatever reason, they're not uh, working or operating at a certain time, you always have this camera to rely on and come back to. Usually this is on a tripod. Usually we never wanna move this camera at all. Uh, it's just your safety net. If everything else gets screwed up, you always have this camera angle to rely on. And the reason why we set it up in the back is so that we can hide it behind this pillar here. Essentially, when people arrive, we don't want them seeing cameras and lights and feel overwhelmed or feel like uh, they're about to experience anything but the day of the people that they love. So when guests walk in, we've placed it behind the pillar here so that people don't see our camera. You can only really see it if you come around this aisle or if you're coming down this aisle here. Uh, so we're as unobtrusive as possible. And it's a pretty nice camera angle here. Let's talk about the different angles you can get with your wide shot that are acceptable and, and really depend on what kind of style and what angles you prefer. Okay, so as you can see, we've cast a really wide net. So if anything is going on, we're gonna be able to capture anything and everything. This includes the people that are gonna be standing up front, as well as the bride walking down the aisle. Over here, you're gonna see a long walk all the way over, probably to about here, maybe. Um, and this is just gonna be a really wide angle. Again, this angle really depends on what your preference is and really how wide of a shot you prefer as a cinematographer, as a videographer, a wider shot is gonna provide you a lot more of a safety net than a tighter and more compressed shot. And we'll show that one right now. 
Okay, so this is gonna be a lot more of a compressed shot. So if you want to only see the people that are maybe standing up front, uh, this would be the angle that you would prefer. Again, totally up, depends on what you are trying to do. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit tighter of a shot, so you're not gonna be able to see as much of the bride walking down the aisle, but you are gonna be able to see a lot more details in people's faces. So if you want to be able to capture the groom's face over here, if he's standing here waiting for his bride to arrive, you're gonna be able to still do that from this camera angle, in addition to having a probably closer tight shot on this side as well. So now that we've covered our cutaway shot, let's talk about our tight shot. And unfortunately, when you are operating by yourself and you're only operating two cameras, this requires a little bit more positioning and a little bit more runaround, but we still wanna do it in a way that's unobtrusive to everybody around us. So let's get started with the positioning of this tighter camera. So as you can see, I am on a 70 to 200 millimeter Canon 5D Mark IV and a monopod. And the reason why I like operating a monopod here is it allows us a nice stable shot while also allowing us to get high and get really low depending on the shot that we're trying to acquire. Uh, this is really gonna be the main spot that we're gonna be hanging out with this camera. And it allows us to see both the bride walking down the aisle as well as the groom's facial reaction and anything that's going on over here while also, again, observing our 180 degree plane, that is that center aisle. We're essentially doing a nice little crossfire, shooting this way with our cutaway camera, shooting the opposite direction and seeing much more of the groom's face in this case. Uh, a lot of times, I'm six and a half feet tall, so I can get a little bit higher than everyone else. I can see over everyone. I can see as soon as the doors open and the bride walks out, and I can just skim across the top of everyone's heads. Um, which is a pretty decent shot. It's gonna be definitely very unobtrusive. You're not gonna have to be in the photographer's uh, world being in the center aisle. But in a lot of cases, people don't have that same luxury. So what I tell our guys is we're actually gonna do a small amount, a real small amount of middle aisle shooting. And this is definitely something that you wanna discuss with the photographer before you get started to make sure it's okay with them and make sure that you're able to get a great shot of the bride and her facial reaction walking down the aisle. So let's go take a look at that middle aisle. Typically, I'm going to want to crouch down to be a little bit smaller uh, in size, and I don't wanna be in all the bridesmaids view. I don't wanna be taller than the groom and the officiant. It tends to get pretty crowded up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get right over to this corner and crouch down in a way that I'm not being seen by my cutaway camera in the back or be obtrusive to anyone in this world over here. And it allows me to see a nice shot of all the bridesmaids walking down the aisle. They can walk around me and the photographer. But then when the bride opens those doors, you're able to see her facial reaction as she starts walking down the aisle with dad or whoever's walking her down that aisle. Typically when she gets about halfway down the aisle, we're gonna stand up and we're gonna go back to position A to be able to get the exchange with the father and with the groom up front. So let's make our way back over there. When I come back over here, I'm gonna wanna go a little bit higher. I'm gonna wanna get it right to my wheelhouse where I'm feeling confident and comfortable. I typically use a tripod, or I'm sorry, a monopod as like the stock. This is gonna be right in my shoulder. So I'm able to have four points of contact. It's one, two, three, and then the ground is four. Um, and I'm able to get that nice exchange as soon as the bride gets to the front of the aisle. Typically, the photographer might move over here to the left of me to get that exchange as well. Um, and if they don't, it's not really your problem. It's nothing you can really do about it. If you're, again, if you're having a conversation with the photographer about where they're gonna be for that exchange and asking them to be in a certain spot, a lot of times they'll see that as a sign of respect and they'll do the things that you're looking for them to do. So if you're here, you're able to see a nice profile shot of all of this going down. And really for the rest of the ceremony, we might stay here. We also might decide to move up uh, the ceremony aisles um, a little bit. Uh, it really depends on what your view looks like. But again, we wanna stay over on this side as much as possible when we're using only two cameras for the ceremony. It's worth mentioning that when you're in this side aisle, the position of your monopod. 
I've seen a lot of videographers who will stand just kind of right in the middle, um, but that's not really keeping in mind all the people that are gonna be getting up during the ceremony and moving up and down this aisle. And instead of having people go underneath your camera angle or in the worst case, in front of your camera angle, if you simply step forward and come near the seats, you're solving a problem without having to even have discussions with people. So if you're on this side, people can simply go behind you, photographers, crying babies, whatever is happening in this aisle, they go behind you, they're not gonna touch you, provide space for them to be able to do it. It's polite to the people who are in the ceremony space, but it's also gonna mean that they're not screwing up your shot and you can stay rolling the entire time. So by being here, you're still getting a great shot. Next up, halfway through, you're probably going to want to move to the center aisle if you only have two camera angles. This is where you're gonna get the first kiss. This is where you're gonna get a little bit of a ring exchange. And uh, it's just a better angle for the final stages of any ceremony. So let's move over there and I'll show you the camera setup that we usually like to do. So typically when we round this corner, the best man has handed the rings to the officiant and we're about to have the commencement of the ring ceremony. And typically we're gonna wanna come up here and establish where we are gonna be for the remainder of the ceremony because the first kiss is gonna happen pretty close to after rings are exchanged, at least in probably about 75% of the ceremonies that we shoot. Typically the photographer is gonna want to be in the middle to try to get as, a, as much of a symmetrical shot as possible. So we're not gonna to wanna to be directly in the middle because that's where they're gonna be operating. We are gonna to try to pick one side or the other so that they can still get the shot and we're gonna be crouched down. So if they wanna get the shot, they can still stand up and they can shoot over us as well. So in my case, I'm gonna probably establish a shot here. I'm gonna come down and I like to use a lot of posts and a lot of chairs just like this to try to get a little bit more stable of a shot because we are on a monopod. So we're gonna want as much stabilization as possible uh, to try to get this shot. I'm gonna zoom in. Again, I don't wanna be here because I don't want people's cell phones to get in the shot right as the first kiss is about to happen. I'm gonna come out a little bit more and typically the photographer might be beside me right here um, because they're gonna want that again to get that really symmetrical shot. Um, and this is where I'm gonna be for the remainder of the ceremony. I just got a good squat position in, something that's comfortable for me for probably five to 10 minutes. We're gonna get the rings being exchanged and typically the officiant is gonna ask them to kiss shortly after this. So right after we get them kissing, they're gonna wanna walk down the aisle and I'm gonna wanna see them celebrate at the front, shoot it here. I'm gonna want to stand up and probably move pretty quickly to the back to get one last shot of them walking down the aisle. It makes it so that if you're putting some sort of recap or trailer video, you have a bunch of moments up front and then you're also gonna get one more shot, maybe one or two seconds long from the back. So I'll pick the same side that we were on and I might get a little bit wider of a shot, say if I was on a 200 millimeter focal length at that point, maybe we go to 70 millimeter at this point going to get a little bit more crowd, a little bit more faces in the shots and have them actually moving towards us to close out the ceremony. Okay, so hopefully that video was helpful for you solo shooters out there. Make sure you're checking out part three of how to film a wedding ceremony. We're going to expound upon different camera angles, different camera rolls in part three. It's going to be super critical. It's going to tie it all together and make it worth your while. Uh, it's gonna be at the end of this video, but before we go over to that video, I wanted to remind you, make sure you give us a little thumbs up. It helps a lot. Make sure you're hitting that notification bell up top if you want more content like this in your feed every single week. That's the place you're gonna wanna do that as well. Guys, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it's been helpful for you. We will see you in the next video, part three of how to film a wedding ceremony.